All right, guys. It is a gray, rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Well, we need a little bit of rain here in the drought parched, undisclosed swamp. Uh, here, all this gloomy. It is Saturday, March 6, 2021. So, I'm going through all of the various links you uh, alert listeners are sending me today to spread the doom and gloom on this gloomy, doomy day in the Sunshine State. So, I'm just trying to make up my mind. I'm going to put the little dog, the sleepy little dog down. He's having a sleepy day in, on this rainy day. So, uh, here are my choices. Let's see. How about climate change has stolen more than a billion tons of water from the west's most vital river. I'm talking about the Colorado River. Uh, well, I've been talking about that for how many years now? All right. <coughs> from the Colorado River to the Arctic Ocean, the latest news on the methane bomb from fizz.org. Testing waters of East Siberian Arctic Ocean suggest origin of elevated methane. You know, this is just the latest news. Uh, I'm just going to read you the last wrap-up conclusion of this article. Planet scientists, I love that term, planet scientists, are concerned that warming waters, in addition to a warming atmosphere, could accelerate the release of methane into the air, resulting in accelerated warming, which could, in turn, lead to accelerated permafrost melting. This cycle could lead to warming the entire planet at a faster pace than has been predicted, you know, by those slow-witted planet scientists talking about the methane bomb, but uh, we're going to look at somewhat, not, not exactly, a, uh, the methane bomb, although that's probably part of the story. To look forward, we're going to look backwards. And this is thank you to CBS News uh, bringing us this article. Earth's largest ever mass extinction is a warning for humanity. It's not a warning for any other species of Earthling that we share the planet with. This is a warning for humans. So the rest of the the Earthlings never mentioned anywhere in this article, I guess, can go back to sleep now. But humans, listen up. CBS News has something to say. Earth's largest ever mass extinction is a warning for humanity. Right now, right now, today, right now, that means March 6, 2021, our planet is in the midst of what science says, if you listen to those pesky planet scientists, is an unprecedented rate of change, unlike anything seen in tens of millions of years. Okay, it's the next sentence that I really was going to make an entire rant on. And listen to the second sentence in this article. Tell me what word is missing from this sentence. This is a, uh, a doomer test, and I guarantee you this was an editorial decision. What is the word missing out of the second sentence of the planetary emergency uh, and warning for humanity article from CBS News? Okay. Overconsumption unsustainable practices and the release of immense amounts of greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels 
are altering our life-sustaining climate at a dangerous pace. Oceans are acidifying and losing oxygen, and species are dying off. All right, what was the one word that was dropped in that sentence? What I will never know is the most important word in that sentence, which is nowhere in the sentence. Did the original reporter put the word uh, in there and then the editor sliced it out? And my guess is that's what happened. I'm going to try to give the benefit of the doubt that the first word in that sentence, overpopulation, was redlined out. But anyway, I'm not going to get in, make an overpopulation rant about this. This is a, an article about uh, the past and future great dying. This is not the first time that life on our planet has faced an epic challenge. The worst time came a little over 250 million years ago before dinosaurs walked the earth. In an episode called the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, or the Great Dying, when 90% of life in the oceans and 70% of life on land vanished. Recently, two groundbreaking studies on the Great Dying reveal that the causes of that mass extinction bear some striking similarities to what is happening today. In fact, in some ways, the pace of climate change, such as the rate of the release of greenhouse gases, is much faster today than it was 250 million years ago. Scientists say historic episodes like this, I don't mean, I don't know, are they talking about the first great dying or the second great dying that we're in the middle of? I'm not sure which one they're referring to here. Scientists say historic episodes like this offer a timely warning to humanity of what can happen when ecosystems change too fast for life to keep up. In fact, the evidence compiled by scientific research on today's pace of change is ominous, to say the least. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing at a pace 100 times faster than it naturally should. Our planet is warming 10 times faster than it has in 65 million years. Our oceans are acidifying 100 times faster than they have in at least 20 million years. And oxygen dead zones in our oceans have increased tenfold since 1950. Given the similarities, you know, between today and 250 million years ago, given the similarities and what is at stake today, digging into the causes and impacts of the great dying can open up a window into a possible dire future for our planet and also elucidate how urgent action is needed to avoid ecosystem and societal collapse. Dun, 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 dun. <coughs> so what led to the great dying? They're talking about the first great dying. What led to the second great dying is one species called humans. So if they're talking, I, I think they're talking about the first great dying because you can, you can answer uh, what led to the second great dying, the one we're in the middle of right now in one word, humans. 
But let's try to go answer the question about the first great dying 250 million years ago when there were no humans. <clears throat> what led to the great dying? Digging is exactly what pro Professor Uwe Brand does for a living. As a geoscientist from Brock University in Canada, his job is to dig deep into Earth's past by digging into the Earth itself, looking for clues about what the planet was like millions of years ago. In this capacity, Brand is like a crime scene investigator looking for forensic evidence to help him put together the pieces of the great dying puzzle, an event which preceded his existence by hundreds of millions of years. Not an easy task. Well, it certainly will be a much easier task, uh, you know, 250 million years from now. Uh, it will be a much easier task for the future uh, diggers to uh, figure out uh, the cause of the second great dying. There will, there will be a little bit of mystery of, of what is this quarter inch thick layer of all of this multicolored, uh, this brittle stuff, uh, the plasticine, they're going to call it the, the plasticine. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> CBS News interviewed Brand <clears throat> to help us understand how this all happened. This is, uh, he calls it the perfect storm. I call it the perfect storm, said Brand, because, as he explains, it was not a single game-changing event like the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Instead, it was a domino effect, a series of events all related to each other, which eventually put the nail in the coffin. After decades of uncertainty, two studies published uh, around the same time illuminated how it happened. Brand was co-author of one of these studies, an October 2020 paper published in the journal Nature Geoscience, examining the causes of the Permian-Triassic mass extinction. In that study, Brand in the study Brand was involved in, the authors employed a technique using the element boron from fossil brachiopod shells. Uh, anyway, guys, this gets uh, way too complicated too quick. Anyway, um, all of this... Uh, stuff enabled the researchers to reconstruct the likely chain of events that killed almost all life on Earth 252 million years ago. In another paper that was released around the same time, researchers discovered a rare molecule called coronine, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right, here is how Brand described how the events unfolded 250 million years ago, uh, not how the events uh, unfolded starting about 10,000 years ago. All right, over the course of a million years, extensive volcanic activity in what is now Siberia flowed through cracks and crevices of sedimentary rocks searing oil and gas deposits as it moved along, producing the coronine scientists recently discovered. Consequently, massa lava beds were created. Quote, it would cover at least half of the United States to a thickness of at least several kilometers. Close quote. This process gradually released gigantic amounts of heat-trapping carbon gases at levels much higher than today. For comparison, CO2 concentrations 
during that time period are estimated to be a few thousand parts per million, whereas today our CO2 level, while higher than it has been in the last three million years, is still significantly less at 415 parts per million, but rising fast. <coughs> so going back 250 million years ago, the immense amount of greenhouse gases present back then warmed global atmospheric temperatures to levels 18 degrees Fahrenheit higher than they are today because of the impact this had on ecosystems it forced land animals to rapidly adapt, move or die and 70 percent did not make it. In the ocean uh, atmospheric CO2 was absorbed mixing with water and forming sulfuric acid acidifying the seas. As a result, coral, I'm sorry, coral, coral disintegrated and the shells of ocean creatures dissolved. Back on land, the hotter climate shifted vegetation and ignited wildfires. That exposed more rocks and erosion went into overdrive. As a result, an overabundance of nutrients flowed into the oceans causing at first an explosion of life, but then there was the inevitable death and decomposition which ate up most of the life-giving oxygen in the ocean. Can you say ocean dead zones? 90% of ocean life died. Yes, Brand says existence was getting hit from all angles. Quote, these are not individual and separate causes, but they all acted together. They acted in concert, and that is why I call it the perfect storm. You got hit on this side with temperature, on this side with acidification, and then finally the knockout punch came from deoxygenation, close quote. Okay, can we learn from history? As catastrophic as the great dying was, scientists are now concerned the Earth could now be headed for another disaster. Hmm, right now our planet is warming abruptly to levels not seen in over 100,000 years. Oceans are acidifying and oxygen dead zones are multiplying. And astonishingly, Brand says that the rate of release of heat trapping greenhouse gases is in fact much more radical than it was back then. Remember, it took about a million years for the great dying to unfold. Quote, right now, our emissions are 10 to 20 times higher than what happened at the end of the Permian mass extinction, which was the largest and biggest mass extinction. Close quote. To save ourselves, to save ourselves, he says we must learn from events like the great dying. Quote, you know what they say, learn from history, because if you don't, you will repeat it. The way I see it, this is going to happen if we don't stop it or don't mitigate what we are doing, he said. But, but, Brand stressed, Brand stressed that we still have time to turn this around, to turn this around by moving away from the burning of fossil fuels. Oh yes, we are going to turn around the second great dying. Are you ready to turn around the second great dying, little dog? And uh, so the little dog and I are gonna get around and we're gonna turn around the great dying by heading off to the laundromat 
with this laundry pile from hell and uh, at least we uh, maybe we'll be wearing clean clothes in the great dying get out there and get to the laundromat while you still can bye guys